Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And now, tonight's story, The Case of the Moving Van Murders. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A man's home is set to be his castle, and it's up to the forces of law and order to uphold this principle. But the individual householder should exercise diligence in maintaining the security of his domicile, particularly when the family leaves for a vacation. As in the story you are about to hear, this is the time when thieves often move in. Oh, now, look what you've done. What's the matter with you, anyhow? Don't you know how to handle a piece of furniture? Bless, son. I was just as much your fault. You were supposed to balance it. I ought to poke you right in the mouth. Don't try it. There'll be more furniture busted around here and over your head. Easton ain't gonna like it when we show up with that piece all marred up. Hey, let's leave it here. Easton don't have to know nothing about it. We've been here too long now anyway. Some of the neighbors might be getting wise. Hey, what's that? Sounds like somebody coming. What's going on here? Who are you men? Uh, we're moving these people out. Uh, who are you? I just happen to be the owner of this house, that's all. Who is it? You were away. Shut I... up. You thought I was away on vacation, is that it? I think you're a couple of crooks. I'm going to call the police about this. Oh, you ain't calling the police, buddy. That's what you think. Uh, hey, get out of here. Uh, Let's get out of here. Right. You're going fast. I didn't hit him square enough to keep him down. I'm not wasting no time. Yeah, here he comes. He's going to chase us in the car. That ain't going to get him nothing but trouble. Take a road to the park, Duke. Too much traffic there. Yeah, that gives me an idea. Hang on. Yeah, here he comes right after us. Well, there's a park right up ahead. That's where we'll take care of him. What are you going to do? Just hang on tight. You'll see. No real rough stuff, Duke. I don't want to kill him. You want to end up in a pen? No, I don't want to end up in a pen. Then we've got to take care of this guy. We can't lose that car. You know that, don't you? We can get out and slug him again. Too complicated. There's only one way to do this. Hey, he's going to try to cross us over, Duke. Get in front of us. He's going to be sorry. So watch it, Duke. Watch it. Let him watch it. This is where he gets it. <laughs> You got him, Duke. He's catching fire. That's his tough luck. We're getting out of here. Hi, Chief. I've been wondering if he'd get here. Hello, Hankin. Now, I was in court when Miss Miller reached me with your message. She said something about a man being killed in a fight with moving men. Well, that's, that's my idea, Chief. And I'll tell you why. First, a man by the name of Meyer was run off the park road about two hours ago. Car caught fire, and when they pulled him out of it, well, you know what. Yeah, that's a hard way to die. Mm. Lucky for us, there were a couple of kids playing ball in the park. They said it was a hit and run with a truck involved. Did they say what kind of a truck? A moving van. And when I got here to the man's address, I find the doors wide open, the house empty of furniture, and uh, this hat on the floor. Now, the neighbors say they noticed the moving van, and it didn't have any name on it. The whole thing was covered by a big canvas. I've got a theory. The furniture was being stolen. Check. Mr. Meyer happened to walk in on them unexpectedly. They clobbered him and got going. But he chased them. And that leads us to the wreck in the park. Well, I think you've got it, Harrington. Now, let's take a look through the house. Well, I left the phone anyway. I wonder if it's still hooked up. It is. I called Miss Miller from here. Oh. Well, uh, here's something. Looks like a furniture pad. Yeah. That belonged to the moving van. It's a brand new one, too. Let's see if we can find the name of the maker on it. Here it is, Chief. The Acme Awning Company, 234 Front Street. Where's that phone? Hello, Miss Miller. Oh, Mr. Garrett, did you find Harrington? 
Yes, I'm with him right now. I'd like you to check up on something for me, Miss Miller. All right, Chief. Now, this thing looks like a robbery and a murder setup. Some crooks emptying a house of furniture killed the owner of the place when he showed up unexpectedly. And we've got just one real clue. A furniture pad. Furniture pad? Those big canvas pads that movie men use to protect furniture. Oh, sure. Call the Acme Awning Company, 234 Front Street. I've got it. If they've sold more than one, get the names of all the buyers. All right, Mr. Garrett. We'll see you later at the office. I only hope the awning company has a record on it. I hope so, too. Oh, and there's something else. Huh? What's that, Chief? We'll need a list of the items of furniture that were taken. Yeah. Neighbors ought to be able to help out on that. That's a good idea. Let's try them. Hey, is Easter waiting for us? We're going to tell him about that guy? I'm going to tell him plenty. Get that truck to the back end of the lot. I told you before about leaving it here. I want to talk to you. So you want to talk to me? Brody can drive it back, can he? Okay, I'll drive it back. Getting in kind of late, ain't you, Duke? Listen, Easton, that's your fault. What are you talking about? I'll tell you what I'm talking about. You got us into a mess because you didn't have that job case right. You got the furniture, didn't you? Yeah, you said those people were going to be away. They were away. Then why did the guy come walking in on us? So he happened to come home. You can't figure out everything. He come home all right. And we had to run him off the road to keep him up chasing us right into this yard. All right, so you got rid of him. What are you beefing about? I figure we took a big chance this time. I figure we ought to have a bigger cut. Duke. <laughs> you got a nerve coming in here and talking to me like that. You know, I got a notion to throw you right out in your face. Don't get tough with me, Easton. I wouldn't like it. No. Well, let's see how you like this. I'm running this show, Duke. You do like I say. Why, you... I'll show you like this! Like I said, Duke, I'm running the show. You're a good man. You want to play it smart and stay with me, all right. But tell me, right now. Okay. You're with me. That ain't answering the question. Okay. So I'll stay with you. That means you're taking orders and no beats. Okay. All right. Now, look, with that new load we got, there's too much in the warehouse. You and Brody take the rig over there and load up for a trip out of town. Where? I'll tell you later. Looks like we got company. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? You the owner here? That's right. Who are you? Name is Harrington. This is Mr. Garrett, district attorney. Yeah? What do you want me for? The sign says you rent out trucks. That's why I put the sign up there. I'm going back and help Brody, Mr. Easton. In just a minute. You work here? Yeah. What kind of work do you do? I just work around the yard, uh, moving trucks, that kind of thing. What's your name? Uh, Duke Carlin. How long have you worked here? Uh, six months, maybe. Uh, ain't that right, Mr. Easton? Yeah, yeah, that's about right. Uh, anything else, mister? No, that'll be all for now. What do you mean, for now? Did you rent out any trucks today, Easton? Look, what's this all about? You come in here asking a lot of questions. Why should I have to tell you my business? A house was robbed a few hours ago. All the furniture was shoved into a truck and carted away. When the owner tried to stop it, he was run off the road and killed. So what's that got to do with me? The truck left a pad behind that came from this lot. A pad? A canvas-covered furniture pad. We checked with the awning company that made it. They said it was sold to you. Oh, now, wait a minute. I run a truck rental yard. I rent out rigs to whoever comes in here and puts up the price. Did somebody use one of my trucks to pull a robbery? I can't help it. I got no control over what they do when they leave the lot. How many trucks did you rent out today? Hmm, three or four, maybe. Are you all back? Yeah, yeah, they're all back. Could we see your records for the day? Yeah, just a second, I'll get them for you. What do you uh, think about this setup, Chief? I don't like the looks of it. No, I don't either. Look, there's another guy at the back of the lot. This is a pretty small place. They all work here. They must be tripping over one another. Oh, here comes our man back. Look, I've been thinking about this. Why should I give you my records? Well, they could be important to our investigation. Sorry, nothing doing. We've got ways of getting them, you know. Sure you have. And when you come in here with a court order, I'll hand them over. 
but not until. You don't want to help us at all, do you? Why should I? Nobody pays me to be a cop. Well, let's go, Harrington. Yeah, that guy's got a disposition like a bucket of worms. Why don't we just take him in? Might not be so lippy when we get him downtown. We need something specific to go on. What about the pad? Uh, he's got the answer for that. It could have been lost by someone who rented a truck. You don't believe that. Neither do I. But he's going to dummy up a phony record that'll make it look that way. Then he can blame the robbery on someone who doesn't even exist. Now, that's the reason he won't let us see those records right now. But I might surprise him by getting here with a court order before he expects it. Now, why would they be driving that big van off the lot? Hey, did you see who was at the wheel? Yes, the yard man. They got a gas pump here and a lube rack. No reason to drive it out when it's not rented. Unless they want to move some furniture on their own. This could be the break we're looking for. I can take a cab into town. Get in your car and follow them. Right. With the family away on a vacation, a home has been broken into by crooks who loaded the furnishings into a moving van. But the man of the house had appeared unexpectedly and the crooks had killed him. An important clue is a heavy canvas furniture pad that we traced to a truck rental yard. The operator of the yard, a man named Easton, refused to help us. So while I went to pick up a court order to compel his cooperation, Harrington followed a truck that left the yard under suspicious circumstances. District Attorney's Office. Here's Harrington, Miss Miller. Chief, come in yet? Not yet, Harrington. Any message? Just tell him I followed the truck to a warehouse on Stacy Street, 312. I'm calling from a phone booth right near the place. You're going to make an arrest? Will you need help? I don't know yet. I'm going in now and find out. Got the key? Right here. Well, give me a hand. Yep. Yeah. Man, that's a lot of furniture we got here. A lot of dough in it, too. Let's get doing it. And, uh, how about this one to start with? Okay. Latch on. All set? Check. Yeah. 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 This is all fancy stuff. They ought to be able to pedal it quick. Now, the quicker the better. Uh-oh. Put it down. It's a cop. Better let me handle it. I thought you fellas were supposed to be in the truck rental business. We are. What do you do, rent them furnished? This is just a moving job we're taking care of. Quite a job. Who are you doing it for? We have to ask the boss about that. I don't see the boss around. Well, you can find him if you go back to the lot. You'd like me to do that, wouldn't you? I don't know what you mean. Let's go inside and see what you've got in there. Listen, mister, we got work to do. We've got no time to gamble. You, you. can take time. I'll, uh, I'll stay out here and load this piece into the van. Wait a minute. You better come in with us. Let's go. You've got enough stuff here to stock an apartment store. Well, that's a warehouse. That's what it's for. Where did all this furniture come from? Well, like I said before, why don't you talk to the boss? Did you fellas bring any of this stuff here? Uh, yeah. Where'd you pick it up? Different places. What kind of places? Houses, stores, I don't uh, know. This, this table here, where did it come from? I don't remember. Well, I think I can tell you where it came from. I don't see how you can. An oval dining table, antique pine. That happens to be on a list of articles stolen from a house this morning. There's more in this same group that are on the list. You want to hear them? Why tell us about it? Because you probably brought them here. Oh, you're crazy. You're under arrest, both of you. What for? Suspicion of burglary and homicide. What do you mean, homicide? The owner of that house was run off the road and burned to death. You're going to have to tell us about that, too. Let's head for my car. They head nowhere, mister. Don't you make any moves till you get a bullet through your back. Well, the boss. Yeah, that's right. The boss. It's a good thing you got here, Easton. He was going to horse in. <laughs> he never had a chance. I saw him followed you, and I followed him. You people are in a mess. 
Now, if you're smart, you won't make it any worse than it is. Yeah? What should we do? Roll over and play dead? Look, I don't figure it's going to get any worse than it is. All right, get a gun, Duke. Yeah. Yeah, you... <laughs> yeah. Now, listen. You're under arrest, too, Easton. And I'm warning all of you. Anything you say might be used as evidence. Hey, these guys never know when they're losers, do they? Shut up. What are you going to do with them, Easton? Well, then I ain't going to let him pick at the place. I'll show you what I'm going to do with it. Yeah. I know to take care of him for a while. Yeah, but what about when he comes out of it? This guy knows all of us. He can identify Don't us. Don't worry. I got plans for him. All right, pick him up. All right, come on, Brody. Yeah. Brother, is he out? That's what we want. All right. Lift. Yeah. Take him out to the van. Yeah, Is something wrong, Miss Miller? I was hoping I could catch you down here. Well, what's the matter? Harrington phoned a while ago. What'd he say? He said he followed a truck to a warehouse on Stacy Street. Said he was going to move in and might make an arrest, and I got the feeling he might need help. Get in. What was the number on Stacy Street? 312. I probably shouldn't have left the office, but I knew you'd be driving into the parking lot, and I thought this might be urgent. You did just right. It could be urgent. Yeah, we were all set. That guy still unconscious? He's out cold. He ain't dead, is he? No, no, he's still breathing. That's too bad. Hey, where are you going? Well, I was just going around back. Come here. What do you want? Trying to sneak away, eh? Well, I didn't have nothing to do with this thing, and I think you guys are in pretty deep. <clears throat> what do you mean you didn't have nothing to do with it? Look, you're in with us. Right up to the top of your yellow streak. No, no, no. Wait a minute, Easton. I didn't hire on to come and murder. You're going to do like I say. You can't kill cops and get away with it. We can't leave this one alive and get away with it. He's right, Brody. We got to do it. Not me. I'm getting out of here. Now, you try that again and the next one goes through your back. Okay, Easton, okay. Get in the truck with Duke. How do we do this, Easton? Head north, out of town. To the freeway? No, not to the freeway. We want some privacy on this job. Head for the road along the river. Okay. Uh, where on that road? Turn off just before you get to the bridge. To the right, there's a road there. Yeah, I know. Go about 100 yards and then pull over. I'll follow you. Uh, what about this guy's car? I'll be in it. When we get through with him, we'll leave his car alongside the road so it'll look like an accident. That's a good idea. Go on, get going. Come on, Brody. I hope I'm all wrong about this, but when Harrington says he'll call, he usually calls. Well, you'll soon find out if anything's wrong. Here's the warehouse. You gonna drive right in? Might be better if we stop right here across the street. Doesn't seem to be a truck there. Mr. Garrett, wasn't that Harrington's car? It certainly was, with a stranger driving it. Then something must have happened to Harrington. Yeah, it looks that way. You better stay with that car, Chief. Don't worry, I will. We're almost there, ain't we, Duke? Yeah, yeah, you asked me that a dozen times already. Well, Easton ain't behind us yet. Don't worry about Easton. He knows where we're gonna be. I, I don't like this deal, Duke, you know that? Yeah, you already said so, but we're going through with it anyway, so come on. Now, let's get him out of there. He's conscious. All right, you. Get out. I'd be delighted. Here comes Easton. I told you he'd show up. That's another one against him. Stealing a car. Maybe I'm mouth shut. Good. You got him out of there. Got to close the doors, Brody. Yeah. All right. Let's get him down to the river. Come on, Cap. Move. 
What? What are we going to do with him? We're going to hold his head on until he drowns. Then we'll put him in his car and run it into the river. Is that the sound all right? That sounds great. Not to me. Nice and hard. Hey, 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 hey. You try that again and you get a bullet right through the head right now. A minute ago, you, you said you were going to drown me. You mean I got a choice? Let's get him down there. It'd be easier to do this if we tie his feet, Easton. All right. Take off your belt and strap him up. You fellas are crazy if you think you can get away with this. Who's going to find out about it? That's right, cop. They're going to have a hard enough time just finding you. Come on, Duke. Get the belt off. We'll use Brody's belt. You'll stay right where you are without moving. Cops! Go on, go on. Shoot some more, Chopper. I got your man in front of me. Go on, shoot some more. Just think you got me, Easton. We're both going into the street. All right, don't try to get away. I I quit, mister. I'm not trying to go nowhere. My arm. I think you broke my arm. You were firing at me. I had to do something about it. I'll take care of him, Chief. All right. All right. Up the bank. (laughs) Give me time. You you twisted most of the breath out of me. You all right, Harrigan? Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm fine, Chief. But how did you happen to get there? Oh, you can thank Miss Miller for that. She had an idea you might be able to use a little help. Oh, was she right? Thanks, Miss Miller. Anytime, Harrington. How's the man's arm? I'm all right. You're all under arrest. Yeah? What for? Several things, including murder. Not me. I I didn't kill nobody. Then you'd better be ready to tell us all about it. Keep your mouth shut, Brody. You hear me? You're wasting your breath, Easton. With a bunch like this, somebody always sings. Loud and long. And you're going to find that out the hard way, Easton. Come on, let's go. This was a case that hit the front page. The man we called Duke was tried and convicted of murder in the first degree. With Brody, he was also found guilty on charges of breaking and entering and burglary. Easton was convicted for receiving stolen goods, for being an accessory before and after the fact, for conspiracy to commit murder and assault with intent to commit murder. Duke and Easton will spend most of their lives in prison. Brody received a lighter sentence for turning state's evidence. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the file of Mr. District Attorney. have been listening to Mr. District Attorney, which has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. <laughs>